This is a DaVinci Resolve PSA and one that I would consider uh, essential, especially for new users. It's very easy to be overwhelmed in DaVinci Resolve. There's a lot going on on any one page and there's lots of pages. And I'm a big fan of new users, you know, concentrating just on the edit page or even, you know, just on your timeline, get up and running, go through edits, build confidence that way, and then you can start branching out. But as people go through that process of starting to learn more about Resolve, a lot of them miss one really important thing. And it's this little guy right down here. In your viewer, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's this little drop-down menu. We're gonna talk about it, walk through everything it can do uh, right now. <laughs> By default, it should be this first option and it should be grayed out. Now you probably know if you have a clip selected over in the inspector, you have all these transform controls. Stuff like zoom, position, rotation, all that fun stuff. But especially something like this rotation, like this gets wild pretty quick. Uh, positioning and, and zoom. Oh, the zoom, like it zooms very, very quickly. Sometimes you don't want to mess with uh, dragging sliders or just uh, changing this position with this data. And that's where this control comes in really handy. If I just click the icon, not even the drop down, now I have this sort of bounding box and I can click and hold and directly inside my viewer, drag this anywhere I want, you know, drag a corner to zoom it, uh, drag an end to just switch or, you know, zoom on that axis. And you have this line in the center to rotate as well, especially if you've got lots of stuff going on in frame. This uh, is, is faster and nicer and it's very, very cool. <laughs> especially if you're doing some like manual keyframing, you can just get a set of few keyframes, come forward in your clip, drag this around. You'll even see those keyframes, you know, reflected in this path as well. And it will just like go across them. Very cool. Uh, it will go away when you're playing. If you didn't know that, uh, that's already really great, but there's a lot more. Let's keep going right underneath transform. We have crop uh, and that's sort of the same deal. In your inspector, you have these cropping controls from each side. But hey, if you toggle that on in your viewer, then you can just drag in and crop any footage right in here. And then you could know you switch back to the transform. Oh, uh, oh I forgot to say in transform. Uh, this middle center here will change the anchor point. So that'll change the point from which it rotates, from which it scales. Moving on, we got something really awesome, dynamic zoom. Toggling it back off, you might've seen in your inspector, uh, you have this dynamic zoom option. If you toggle it on, then by default, it will just like zoom out of whatever effect you have applied this on. This is just a still of the fusion page. And in the inspector, uh, you have control over the easing. You can also swap whether it's zooming out or zooming in. But if you want more control, that's where we got the drop down. Toggle it on, and you can see you got a green box and a red box. The green box will be uh, the zoom or the scale where it starts. Oh, I might have dragged that a little bit. That's fun. Uh, the red box is where it stops. And you don't just have to do zoom. Check this out. If I, you know, zoom this in, drag it over to the left, I take the red box, which is now about the same size, just drag it to the right. And now with no keyframes, just that effect, it sort of pans across my video and I could have different levels of zoom. I can add easing onto all of that. Really nice to have these controls in frame here. Next, we've got open effects overlay. This is really cool. Uh, if you don't know, hey, in your effects library, uh, you have your toolbox, which has a lot of like fusion effects and other really fun stuff. That's kind of what my channel is all about. But you also have open effects, uh, tons of cool effects. Here on this little, you know, dancing guy, I have the light rays effect. You can see it's making these uh, light rays. You can change these in a whole bunch of way, the, the length of them, all sort of stuff. And you also have this position slider to change where those light rays are coming from. But again, this can be a little clunky, uh, but we do have this toggled on now. And if we zoom out, hey, we can see this little icon up here is controlling that position data. And I can do what I just did. I can drag this around anywhere I want. I can drag that right over the guy. And now it looks like, you know, like he's like he's shining. Cool, he's a star. <laughs> right after that, we have fusion overlay. This very, very powerful. I like on a lot of the stuff I do deals with uh, plugins and presets, bringing power over from the fusion page to the edit page. And just like with the open effects overlay, I can give the user uh, control over certain parameters that they can uh, control right in the viewer with fusion overlay. A big one is my uh, proto energy effect. This is cool. Okay, I'm toggling it off for now. This is something I can update in proto and I want to come in a, a future version. First of all, if you don't know proto, it's super cool. You got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you can change the, the source from all these options as well. Hey, let's uh, talk about something someone wrote me about recently. Uh, one of them is just this really cool line. Which one do I want? I want lava. Cool. You want a fire line? You got it. Now, in the controls for that line, you just have those two-point controls just like that. But uh, toggle on 
uh, fusion overlay. One, this gets really messy because uh, all of the controls for all of these different sources show at the same time. That's the thing I should be able to fix in a future update. But for now, if I zoom in, I can kind of see where this line starts and stops and just drag that anywhere in frame, especially if you want to like keyframe these effects, you know, like if you're doing actual lightsaber effects or something. Uh, it's much easier in here, or you can toggle it over to like polygon sharp and find, yeah, find which ones, which points control that change that anywhere you want in frame. Here's another example. I made some super simple masking effects. And with that selected, with my fusion overlay on, you see now, hey, I can control those uh, mask effects right in my viewer. And of course you can keyframe all of these. You can even, uh, if you select a point, uh, you have like easing over here. You can do all sorts of funky stuff. And uh, one of these masks I made in this pack, I have the fusion overlay on, nothing's here for now. And that's because uh, with this selected, you can just draw whatever mask you want, connect it back up, oops, close it. Hey, uh, uncheck that invert. And now you have a custom mask that you've drawn. Hey, this kind of looks like a whale. So much of what I do is, is made much easier because of this fusion overlay in the edit page. Side note, I, I want this on the cut page um, specifically because we'll be able to use a lot more of my presets on the iPad version. Ooh, that'll be great. But we're moving on right underneath that. We have annotations. I'm gonna come to this next clip and it adds this little bar here. And with this on, I can just like, draw on my frame. If, hey, I say shadows are bad, shadows are bad. And it will connect that drawing just to a marker. So it will only show up on that one frame, or I believe when I pause on that marker, and I can do things like make a quick arrow or a line, or hey, a box. Um, if it's very, very important that this rose um, is, is highlighted in frame or whatever. And of course, you can la how, oops, her. oof. You get the point. <laughs> if you know it's helpful to leave notes for yourself, or especially if you are working in a collaborative project, this can be really nice if you're sending things back and forth, or if you have a project you're working on, you want someone to review it, leave notes. This is popular in lots of like services that offer this, but here you can do it right in Resolve. And finally, uh, we have Smart Reframe. Uh, I'm gonna hop over to a vertical timeline where I have this clip I've dragged in, uh, just these two people, you know, walking down this line, that's great. But hey, what if what if this is all about this one dude here? I can zoom in like I am, and this is a problem you might run into uh, if you are trying to use horizontal footage on a vertical uh, timeline. Uh, say I want to just follow this one older character in my inspector uh, underneath transform, we have smart reframe. Uh, this is, I believe still, a, uh, a studio exclusive feature in Resolve. And you can uh, tell it to auto reframe and it will do that, but Hey, in this example, it auto reframes to the kid and it does a good job, you know, following the kid, it sort of pivots over to um, this adult here. But hey, what if we want it with the adult the entire time? Well, I can go back to any point in this video, uh, change this to reference point, click this little icon. And then now if I have this drop down menu set to smart reframe and that enabled, uh, it gets this little box and I can just point it uh, right to that adult, click reframe again. And now uh, it will just keep that guy in frame as he walks away. It looks pretty locked off now, but remember if we go back to, oh, I don't know if I can toggle this off now. Uh, I think, yeah, if I undo this, I just see, hey, he's starting, he, he's walking along, um, but now, uh, especially with that movement, keeps him locked in, especially towards the end, keeps bringing him back. I haven't used this feature a, a ton and it, it's not the more intense, you know, locked on stabilization that I have, you know, another video and free preset all about. I think this is more generally just like a helping hand uh, along the way. And for more dynamic moments, it might have a, a little bit of an issue. But hey, this drop-down menu, super powerful, I think pretty important. And if you didn't know it was here, Hopefully, uh, this is a, a, a big, big help. If you did know it was here, um, did you know everything I could do? I have people pretty regularly ask me about different effects, whether uh, you know it, it's proto or those mask effects, and I have to say like, hey, uh, do you know about the fusion overlay? So now, hopefully, all of you know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.